eclipses are there lunar eclipses are there so these all highlight the ancient indian understanding of celestial bodies where children learn about them about universe time keeping and they focus on conceptual comprehension rather than technical calculation i'm sure no school is there where we haven't shown solar system through our exhibitions no school will be there where we don't have such activities where the sun is in the middle and the students are moving around to show what is solar eclipse and what is lunar eclipse a comparison of different regional cylindrical systems can also be used that is to illustrate diversity and then along with diversity we have an underlying unity that's all about astronomy so it is basically we are focusing on comprehension rather than technical calculations next after astronomy it is mathematics who doesn't know about maths the most popular it is math mathematics the most popular indian contribution to mathematics is the concept of zero i'm sure we all are aware and if you are aware nobody can be more prouder than us and at the preparatory stage indian origin of decimal system and the indian numeral is what children should learn and when it comes to middle and secondary stage it is all about understanding the development of important mathematical ideas let us introduce to them the significant contribution of our indian mathematicians and it all comes from the fundamental concepts to the advanced topic let our children learn let them locate the contribution of indian mathematicians to algebra coordinate geometry and different combinations and calculus here students learn the development the historical development of the mathematical idea and how, and how they have impacted globally if this is done the work is done we have done we as teachers have done the rest social sciences let's appreciate for being an indian and at the middle age we have to encourage the understanding of india's diverse history and democratic evolution the formation of more modern indian states let them learn the values which are derived from the ancient indian culture let them also have the ideas of peace ahimsa and coexistence as a part of indian culture since ancient times if we are able to cultivate these values in them our future indian future will be taken care of let our children understand the middle and secondary stage at their middle and secondary stage that what was the glorious indian past how they can appre appreciate its complexity how we can take care of diversity and at the same time there is underlying unity there so i'm sure i mean nep wants us to have that rootedness you know wants to develop that rootedness in indian culture coming on next to the languages languages they create connections they create connections to the culture the heritage and the society and local languages used to create a deeper understanding and connection and when i say it is deeper understanding it means language is a tool for cultural connection and identity and this language r1 if you just see the timetable or you know the way it has to be taken up by ncf the first language local language is r1 if a child will understand in a local language he will develop a deeper understanding he is able to connect the i mean it is pani it is jal it is water there are different 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 names but if a child knows what is there in the local language it will be he will be able to connect with what actually water is the rest of the two language three languages are compulsory the other two languages are r2 and r3 they create appreciation again unity in diversity and here comes multilingualism ncf promotes multilingualism why because it wants to foster an appreciation for linguistic diversity and it comes only through multilingualism next is physical education and well being 
now sports and physical activities no doubt they are inseparable part of our culture we have been united emotionally because of these activities they actually integrate traditional indian games and physical activities into the curriculum ncf is integrating these activities with yoga playing a central role can somebody tell me which picture is this what picture which particular sports is here malakamba very good excellent malakam 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 yes yes it is malakam yes. so yes. india has a very rich variety rich heritage of games physical activities it is archery to malk malakam and martial arts to chariot racing malakam had declined you know in i mean like last few years it had lost its importance but now it is gaining again so whether it is martial art whether it is chariot racing india has rich heritage and nca wants us to introduce this all to our children yoga practices have to be there and it is now they have decided to incorporate yoga practice in our curriculum cause it leads to physical mental and spiritual well being so this all highlights the importance of physical education for overall development next next yeah so here comes interdisciplinary and i'm sure we all have heard this it is basically understanding of the social and the natural world when it comes to foundational and preparatory stage through interdisciplinary we ncf focuses on environmental education ncf focuses on interconnectedness of human society and nature and for this they try to expose students they have tried that we need to expose students to local stories as it has been repeated again and again the local stories the poems the narratives folklore histories and games and when it comes to middle stage the secondary stage ncf wants us wants our children to understand india's resources conservation and agriculture practices that mitigates the effect of triple planetary crisis you know the children need to discuss children need to take for the field trips children we need to take them so that they understand what is climate change we cannot discuss how climate change is affected affecting us sitting inside the ac rooms so they want us to concentrate and have discussions just let them see how bio biodiversity loss and pollution is affecting us so the aim of ncf is to give a ground education where the rich rich traditions and knowledge of india we are introducing our students to we are trying to equip them with the contemporary challenges what challenges we have how students develop a sense of identity how they have the responsibility so that they can take up these responsibility in the coming i mean you know, in the coming future so they have to understand this responsibility towards community and the world that is what we teachers have to do now so when we talk about indian knowledge system anybody who has any idea about this indian knowledge system what is this course all about anybody a course on indian knowledge systems please unmute yourself so this is knowledge oh, tradition values yeah. and knowledge to inculcate values and knowledge so basically this comes up in class 11th and 12th here we aim to give them you know ground information we want to have their knowledge deepen you know where they are not simply it is not a rote learning where they are sitting inside the class and learning students now they have to go into the depths special elective course is going to be there for grade 11 and 12 and it is basically designed to deepen their knowledge of various discipline and these disciplines are related to india's knowledge traditions so that is knowledge traditions and practices of india so they it it has actually taken its inspiration
from knowledge to, uh, you know, from the existing course. There is one existing course. It is called Knowledge Traditions and Practices of India. The aim is simply to deepen their knowledge. And students not adopting this KTPI elective, they also will get an exposure through the regular curriculum. That is all about Indian knowledge systems. Next. So, dear all, this was actually a module which included the survey of the field, which had some suggested activities. And, you know, in the further readings, we will come to understand how the learning outcomes can be derived, especially related to the rootedness in Indian culture. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Aarti Ma. As usual, it was uh, tremendously good, I should say, because uh, the way you have uh, put down the things uh, to make it more understandable for the audience uh, should be really appreciated. And with this note, let me go to the next uh, resource person of the day, that is uh, Mrs. Roja. Uh, the stage is all yours, ma'am. And uh, we are very much eagerly waiting to listen about values and dispositions. Good evening, sir, and good evening, uh, all the teachers. Thank you, Aarti ma'am, and thank you, sir. Now, uh, this, dear teachers, when we come across this topic, like values and dispositions, okay, values, the first thing is values. What comes to your mind? I would like to know. When, when we talk of values, what comes to your mind? Values Man, that we know are the different types of values uh, one should yeah, like, uh, have within. Yeah, moral. There are different values like uh -huh. moral values, ethical values, social values, uh, then, uh, you know, fundamental values. So yeah. these values, so, uh, scientific values are there. So these values yeah. uh, should... Uh, that economic, is economic values also, economic values, economic are also values. Yes. Economic values yes. emotional yes. values, so, economic values, we have to many grow cultural values, values are also there. Social yes. values. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. they are all right, wonderful. So, now to develop these values, to develop these values and disposition is actually integral to the aims of education. That the NC NEP has stated. Now, what here is, it says that the, um, you know, the purpose of this um, NE NCF is what to develop good human beings. Uh, sir, please, will you I mean, put on to the next slide, the first slide of this? Uh, yeah, I think you all can read my your educators, here it is, to develop good human beings, you know, who are capable of rational thought and uh, they are an action, of course, and possessing compassion and empathy, courage and resilience, scientific temper, as well as creative imagination with sound ethical moorings and values. It aims what? At, what does it aim at? Producing what? engaged, productive, and contributing citizens for our society. In, and also to build a nation with, you know, such a fulfilling employ, employed uh, citizens of our country. Now, this education also says that, NEP also says that education must build character and prepare for gainful and fulfilling employment. It also states that the students, um, you know, have to develop ethics in them as well as human ethics and constitutional ethics in them. So it is our duty to develop these ethics in the children. Now, students will be taught at a very young age. When we teach children at a young age, you know, um, what happens is they will be having a very clear framework of knowing what is right at a very young age, then that is going to help them in the future. And how is it going to help them in future? Can anyone just tell me? 
when a child is taught what is right at a young age, how will the child be able to uh, use this in the future? He will never be decision making, madam. He will never be very good. He will be very truthful. He will be very, uh, you know, um, what we say as uh, humble, yes. uh, truth. These all things will help him to be a. Nice he will be. He will. He will become a pure human being. He will be yeah, become good, a yes. human being. Pure human being. Good citizen. Good, good human being. Yeah, good citizen. Yeah. He will be a hardworking yes. and honest human being for the country. Yes. yes. Good citizen. He will be honest. He will be punctual. He will be brave. Discipline. Yes. Yes. So, Civilized. Now, how are we going to put these? um values in them how are we going to help them develop these values so the ncf has given us an approach to develop these values and dispositions in our students uh, it says that these values uh, to be developed through this ncf are derived from nep 2020 and which in turn are informed by the india's constitutional values now uh, and broader human values. Now, the process of this, uh, the process and the content of education across stages. Now, we all just now we have seen that Aarti Ma'am has also mentioned about the different stages. And yesterday also, you all have heard about the different stages here: the foundational, middle, secondary stages. So. In these stages, how we are going to come across or how we are going to uh, develop, inculcate these values and how we are going to develop these values and dispositions in them. And NCF here says that uh, these, uh, you know, the, uh, the approaches are in this way. Now, what is the first one? It is the integral part of learning standards. What do you understand by this integral standard, uh, integral part of learning standards? What do you understand? Can anyone just tell me that? Excuse me, sir. Let's go back to the approach to develop values and dispositions, the previous slide. Yes, Ma'am, integral sir. means inseparable part? Integral yes, means inseparable part. Yes. Hello? Yes, of course, inseparable part. You cannot important, separate, I mean, teach them develop. It yeah. can be important. Yeah. Yes, it it's is about all the values like physical, social, all uh, this yes, value. Yes. Integral, integral part it means the whole part. Whole. Yes, integral the whole. Part. That means our land, uh, learning standards must have reflect, you know, the learning standards. That means in our content, in our in the pedagogy, in the assessment that we are going to have for our students, we need to show the approach to develop these values and dispositions. Now, uh, how? what is the next one? Development through practice. What do you understand by that? Can Learn. anyone say? What by doing. Do doing things. It's very clear. Development through practice. Yes. Doing. By doing. Again, again, so, practice, practice. again, again, practice. Yeah. Then development of personality. Yes. So you cannot just tell them that uh, you do this or you do that. That's just giving a lecture. No. So this needs to be practiced, isn't it? Ma'am, yes. uh, development practice also means learning by doing. Learning by doing, of course. And once when they start doing and learning through that, they imbibe the values. And they will be uh, reflecting those values in, at other places. So what the third one, school but culture is central. Of... Can anyone... Walk the talk. No, yes, lead by example. Learning. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. As we say, na no, hands on yes, learning. Yes, 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 hands on. Right, right, right. Yeah. Can anyone now uh, give a, an explanation to the school cultural center? What do you understand by this? <clears throat> school culture is central. Actually, the environment that we can say that we have in the school. Yeah, be... the school culture, the classrooms, how we are, atmosphere. how the classrooms are conducted. Yeah, atmosphere where the children are learning to, I mean, uh, learn caring as well as to collaborate. 
or you know all the things that we need to see in them we are incorporating them in the school culture and that you know for example we have these uh, uh, bal sabha and uh, bal panchayats yeah yes ma'am respect sharing sharing yes respect yes if that is shown in the classroom and uh, then that is what is in the school that is the culture of our school isn't it so if this values and dispositions are in the uh, school culture then obviously they will be developed in the children that is how it is to be done like uh, sometimes now learning values now giving a judgment or uh, um, uh, you know showing some Curiosity justice or equality uh -huh. so for that what the children have we in the school need to develop uh, or uh, have organized uh, bal sabhas or uh, bal panchayats or the amalgamation of humans make up the school school culture has to be depicted yes so we this... can make excuse me ma'am we can make uh, maybe youth youth parliament of our school also Youth Parliament of yes. our school also that yes. would, can be also made means different members different portfolio should be given to them. Yes, yes. Then through that they will be learning. You know that is yes. how the school culture is one yes. is the central yes. to is the center to yes. help yes. them develop yes. these values yes. and dispositions. Yes. Uh, uh, can now the... tell me? Different clubs yes. can be. You know we do have that. Yes, uh, yes. Equal. You're right. In, in in this way they will yes. use, uh, in this way there will be the, the value of leadership cooperation uh, decision taking all such type of yes. uh, habits or values will be calculated yes and calculated yes, yes. yes thank you ma'am now how is this uh, differentiated Social development clubs. across stages mean what does it mean differentiated development across stages what does it mean you all have heard till now the cognitive different stages. Yes. Are there at the cognitive emotional development among the students. Okay. Cognitive okay. Development that is among the there. students. Now differentiated yeah. development across stages. Okay, those stages. Across like stages. Foundational yeah. stage, middle. This, yes. Yes, you're right. Middle stage. So secondary. what the Yes, at foundational stage, what is required is to be incorporated in their uh, pedagogy or in their content. And what is required in the middle stage or preparatory stage and in the secondary stage, it has to be incorporated in that way. So this differentiated development across stages, that is also where we can, that is also one way through which we can develop, you know, values and uh, dispositions. What is this one? The differentiated development effects. Differentiated development effects. For example, if you have given a child something to do or if the child is learning something and you find that the uh, the child has uh, not okay each stage should be exposed to different culture values yes yes you're right uh, now we have come to the next one that is differentiated development effects so when you have given when you have seen some development in a child and you want a better you know uh, him to improve even better so there when you are able to give him more time and are you you are able to uh, help him like with regular uh, dialogue or discussion, etc. Then maybe then we can create more um, and, uh, chances and uh, broader space for them to appro uh, develop values and uh, dispositions. Now, transformation uh, in that child, I guess. How we can transform that child? How we can transform the child? Of course, when. Once when we find that the child is uh, a little weaker in one particular part, mm -hmm. if you are mm -hmm. helping him develop in that part, then of course you're seeing the transformation there. And, this, and also 
differentiated means it is uh, to a particular uh, you know uh, particular you know the value you know if he is not a uh, good in math suppose and you are helping him in that that means uh, you are giving him a space to uh, learn that you're giving time for him to learn that or you're explaining or you're taking time to help him that means you are differentiating it actually helping him in a different subject but the development is uh, you are finding that it is effective your help your effect i mean your help is effective isn't it it is helping him develop in that particular um, subject so we give them uh, i mean it is not of course I'm, i just gave you an example of, of a subject but otherwise also if a child at home you are given at home the child is helping his mother or he is uh, serving and all that helping his mother the same thing if he is able to uh, go and do this kind of community service you know wherever there is a bhandara or something outside uh, in any festive occasion or anywhere or in a party or anywhere then they are coming up with it means that shows that there is some development in the child isn't it he has gone up now if we talk of this uh, content you see in content implicit and explicit can anyone please explain this implicit and explicit explicit ma'am is external development and implicit is internal factors and the internal development of the child yes yes you are absolutely right ma'am this implicit is actually the inner uh, hidden talents or hidden uh, you know uh, qualities and explicit is uh, understood that whatever we are uh, giving through our through the books and the text and uh, through the lessons you know which are clearly stated those are the explicit um, i mean uh, the content that we need to uh, use for developing these values and dispositions mm -hmm. we can use even uh, of course from as aarti madam had just now said that we are rooted you see into our indianness or into our heritage and from there we can take bring out more stories and more i mean you know uh, lessons from the tradition from the history of india not only from india from abroad from around great indian heroes or outside i mean from everywhere from scientific uh, he is a scientific heroes everywhere we can from every aspect or from every walk of life we can take them okay and in the same the same thing that is your know, subject uh, separate subject but here uh, the moral uh, what and what ncf says is the development of values and dispositions is fully integrated into learning standards physiological pedag pedagogical processes and school and classroom culture and processes in addition to this i am sure everybody is listening to this a course on moral and ethical reasoning will be introduced for all students in grade 9 it will be introduced now of course we have no uh, it is only up to 8 i think moral education and all that but now it will be introduced in grade 9 also and uh, later on that uh, there will be more practice and rigorous questioning will be there it is not so easy the challenge is that um, uh, i mean this is um, developing values and dispositions it's a big challenge actually in a um, in this learning standards but still when we have this there are questions like you know uh, whether we are able, there are specific values that needed to be addressed in a focused manner with students and therefore require specified time to be set aside then we can provide them you know more time and um, we can uh, treat them separately we can give them or uh, heed to their needs separately and give attention to them and also you see we teachers also may need in may need support in developing the capabilities in uh, to handle such specific se uh, session on the development of values and disposition in a rigorous manner then of course it will encourage it will be encouraged by respectful questioning and discussion only and teachers and students may need appropriate rigorous and interesting material on these matters 
and uh, you know incorporate both research and experience it is required that we need to re do research and experience as well now values in conflict what do you understand by values in conflict it's very important i feel because you see here children actually these um, every time we find children uh, saying that i need to win or i have to i need my say to go mm -hmm. and all that means they need to be at the higher level but then we need to make the children understand these values too that yes uh, there can be you know uh, failures there can be how to handle these his failures and all and there can be you know they should give respect there uh, like uh, they should have this gender equality they should be able to uh, you know uh, face that uh, no bias and have respect for others and all and coming to the assessment here assessing process is purely observation we cannot simply uh, okay he has given uh, uh, like taking a question and answer or a pen paper test and we cannot just give them marks on it we need to observe the children and at different stages at different levels at different places uh, excuse me my dear teachers uh, somebody is uh, talking with their um, microphone on Please mute yourself. Thank you. So assessment should be done only through observation for these values and disposition. It cannot be done if somebody writes, yes, I am uh, I mean, taking a pencil without asking somebody is good or bad. Okay. Some might say good. Some might say bad. But if the thing is, if the child will learn, that you have to ask and take because um, you should not steal later on he will learn that okay so if he is able to say may i may i take your pencil if he is able to ask and then take that means there is some uh, change in him if you are observing this then you assess so this kind of assessment has to be done and of course values of teachers principals and uh, system is very important. It is a very uh, important, uh, uh, you know, uh, place. It has a very important place because we are the uh, educational functionaries where we need to be equally critical. We need to show the, the same, um, you know, values. Then only we would be able to uh, and help them develop these values and dispositions. So uh, we have here uh, the next uh, slide. You can see foundational stage, how you should go about with the foundational stage assessments, how they should teach. I am, uh, if you can take a screenshot of this, excuse me, sir, would you please show me the, yes, the previous uh, slide, yes. So you can just take a, uh, take a screenshot of this and how actually you should be going about with the approaches or with the teaching in, uh, values and uh, in the uh, in different stages, you know, like in uh, foundational stage, simple stories from vast Indian repository of stories, then learning the uh, learning through those storytelling. After that, discussion is also very important by those uh, young children, you know, uh, makes them learn how to, you know, uh, put out their opinion or put out what they feel or what their mind says. So there are many, uh, you can just take a screenshot of this. Okay, in the middle stage, uh, if, uh, see, in the what is the difference between foundational stage and middle stage? You can find that in the middle stage, the children are now coming up through not only discussions, but also staging of this plays and role plays and imagining, you know, uh, what their, uh, an alternative. To whatever they are learning okay and uh, the secondary stage you know is uh, the difference is that they have to undergo all these things but the difference is that they are more exposed to you know biological sketches of great figures worldwide they have to do some research work and once they do some kind of research they once they learn to uh, find things and address those uh, how to 
address those issues and conflicts and and also use the uh, technology in their uh, work that is how they will be able to develop um, values and it is uh, values and dispositions uh, here it does not mean only values uh, that is showing respect and showing discipline or uh, being good and truthful these are ethical of course but other than that the uh, the the subject values they should be known okay and also the environmental values that is what in which environment they are how they should be and uh, how they should go ahead with it may i go to the next uh, and uh, yes thank you sir this uh, pedagogy across curricular areas and you have been listening uh, all the while in the yesterday as well as today um, when Aarti ma'am was telling about science, mathematics, art, education, languages, they are all, uh, you know, the pedagogy is to anyhow develop or inculcate values in them. Now, science and mathematics, you can understand the creativity in them, the objectivity in them, they sh it should be developed. And also understanding the connection with the real world and also to use the technology and the lens of ethics along with the ethics. Now, uh, you see recently you have come across this, uh, if I talk of this uh, technology here, the uh, digital footprint you must have heard and also uh, cyber parenting you must have come across where the parents and we are learning how to do. And that has to be, you know, uh, filter to um, to the children has to go to the children anyhow that they will be able to understand and they'll then only they will be able to use the technology and then only they'll be able to uh, develop the uh, values in different curricular areas also because technology is not a different uh, you cannot separate technology from their uh, subjects so they need to go with it. And um, and of course, we need to develop interdisciplinary uh, in the interdisciplinary area sensitivity and care towards the environment. It is very, very important today. They should know, understand how the environment has to be, you know, how they have to take care of the environment, how they should work for it and how to, you know, yes care for other humans, birds, plants, etc. And vocational education is another very important one where respect for all professions is required because it is not that if he is, uh, I mean, <clears throat> if he is occupying a higher position and he cannot just insult a person who is working at a lower position. You know, it's like that. Even in a school, what the children have this, uh, a class monitor or a prefect, or, uh, but then these values, if they have that, they will obviously vocational education. I know I understand that they are the vocations, okay, professional. But otherwise, also at school level in the classes, when you're giving them a certain uh, post or certain position, and then asking them, they are prefects of certain things, but they need to know that along with their own, uh, you know, values, they need to. Uh, yes, understand others and help oh. them to develop. Okay. Same thing in physical education, they should understand, uh, they should have that uh, sportsmanship spirit they must develop in them. And that is how they can, um, if that value is developed in them, they will surely be able to, um, you know, spread that around, you know, in social science scientific rigor in analysis of events, appreciation of Indianness, social and uh, democratic values of equality, justice, fairness, and inclusion, desire to improve as a nation. Yes, finally, the whole uh, values and dispositions, all that we need to develop in the children is to bring them to a to improve the nation. Once the children are improved, the nation is improved. Once we Indians, we citizens are good, the nation is good. Okay. So finally, what is it? The school culture and practice says. What does it say? 
you see we have assemblies you see how they are it is actually approaches you see how the school culture and practice approach uh, practices they help in uh, developing the values and dispositions so what is this approach so you have to they can you know values can be uh, developed through the daily assemblies you know teaches responsibility accountability even in meal time it inculcates values of equality sharing caring you know as well as importance and hygiene uh, student com committees and forums teach ownership and responsibility and uh, participating in activities of different committees teaches hmm. for co cooperation obviously it is very important the teamwork collaborativeness co proactiveness taking initiative leadership and conflict resolution is very important in today's scenario and reaching out to parents and community demonstrate respect the school if it reaches out to parents and community it helps the students also it will develop in them you know a kind of respect towards others I means there will be a very collaborated and very um, intricate uh, development i mean relation between the uh, school and um, the community and the parents in developing in helping uh, value developing values in children and uh, students i hope i could make sense thank you sir thank you so much uh, roja ma uh, and we are very happy that uh, you know like uh, uh, because we are hearing this from the right person because I should personally mm -hmm. give this anecdote to everyone because Roja ma'am is a person who is very mm -hmm. soft-spoken among mm -hmm. all our mm -hmm. uh, resource you, person and the way she <laughs> speaks and all. We also get influenced by that. Even I get influenced by Roja ma'am. You. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> uh, you know, very sweet and all while speaking and uh, definitely... It was very less time for you to, you know, speak about uh, values and dispositions because the chapters are so. Also it is a vast huge. thing, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, but still, uh, you have given your hundred percent in bringing down everything to the uh, time that yes. has been given to you. Thank you so much. We are very much indebted to you for this. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And now it's thank time you that. To Jyoti, yeah. yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Now it's time that we uh, we move on to the next part of the. Uh, presentation and I would like to request uh, Mrs. Jayavani Jayaraman to take over uh, the stage. Thank you, sir. And thank you, Roja, ma'am. Thank you, Aarti, ma'am. Now it's time to learn the chapter three about learning about and caring for the environment. So when we talk about caring the environment, it involves understanding the relationship between the human in actions natural resources and ecosystems. It brings with education on climate change, biodiversity, conservation, sustainable living, and so on. So here we'll be just seeing about a quote from the NEP of 2020, what they say about the learning about environment. So the next slide. So here, a quote from the N uh, NEP 2020. So am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma I have a doubt. I have a doubt. That. Okay. So here, a quote from the NEP of 2020 is stating about the um, things uh, which includes uh, uh, water resources, conservation, sanitation, and personal hygiene, everything that we have to inculcate to the students in the initial stage of the development. Especially, we have to add this in the curriculum also. Either it is in all the stages, this environmental caring is a must because in today's context, so please next slide. <clears throat> So when we talk about the history and rationale of environment education in India, about the today's context, we, also, we want to say about it. It's a competition between the man and the environment, or man and the nature. It's a tough competition goes on between a 
uh, think that who is going to win this competition like that we are running behind the uh, nature the resources we are talking about um uh, actually mahatma gandhi said that there is enough need for everybody's need but uh, not for everybody's greed um today we are just running towards that only so because of that the world is facing a, an enormous crisis due to the environmental concerns we can say about ozone layer depletion and so many things so actually when we talk about this environmental education it is not only according to this recent times in before the past of the uh, ancient times itself they started to tell about in the history of india they talk about much about the uh, care about the environment so here i would like to tell about a small uh, uh, quote from tiruvalluvar okay neerindri amayadu ulaginin yaar yaarkum vaanindri amayadu ulukku again i repeat neerindri amayadu ulaginin yaar yaarkum vaanindri amayadu ulukku this is written by tiruvalluvar in the 5th century according to the tamil tradition and this phrase highlights the significance of essential resources of water because without water we can the world cannot exist similarly likewise the values and the contribution are vital to the functioning of the world so it is not only the individual participation overall participation should be needed to care about the environment so when we talk about the next one no driksha ayurveda always we used to do it in the uh, i mean this has been told in the ancient times but still we call it in the form of organic farming yes you are right uh, can you say about what what did i say right now about riksha ayurveda can anybody says about this can anybody else do you have any idea about riksha ayurveda anyone please come out otherwise i uh, it won't be interesting right then it will be like one man show mama as ayurveda for human being maybe vriksha ayurveda yeah ma'am okay so when we talk about this vriksha ayurveda no it is ancient Do indian science of plants and trees focusing on their health growth and productivity so india is an age old economic economic activity is nothing but agriculture so it is a combination like uh, they has to know about the traditional knowledge with the more, uh, modern scientific principles also so when we talk about our health our growth our productivity for that we should know about the plants and the crops what we are just uh, sustaining right now so when we talk about this uh, uh, traditional knowledge of medicinal plants agriculture or uh, uh, zoology or survival technicals or whatever the natural calamities of whatever we are being it has been predicted before centuries in the ancient history itself so when we talk about the another thing about why is the learning caring is very important here we are talking about uh, uh, a, a tribal protest against the <clears throat> cutting of the trees Uh, in the 1730s itself uh, where we used to tell it as a protest as a uh, uh, bishnoi community they used to i mean uh, um, uh, that that is a place in the rajasthan nearby to the jodhpur there the uh, it was, there is a need of constructing a uh, palace over there so the maharaja wants to cut all those trees which that kajari trees is very important for uh, eating of on that particular time and as well as the Uh, it has been as a food earth. that means both animals and uh, uh, we also will be intaking so against the protest you know this uh, um, many of the children more than 360 man, children i mean uh, everybody has been uh, sacrificed their lives for protesting against it and because of that and, and we take that incident alone but regarding that incident only we talk about right now about chikko movement we talk about uh, narmada bachao all those movement the basic uh, foundation is about uh, the uh, protesting against whatever the causes it comes for the environmental issues so the next slide sir so when we talk about the aims of the environmental education yes the aims of environmental education and literacy part is very important because it is a link between the ecological and social economic and political factors 
when i talk about social we are not talking about anything else we are talking about the community and when we talk about the economic we are talking about the economic activities of a person which included maybe about uh, what activities has been involved in primary secondary or tertiary and very important thing about the political factors also we have to know about it because we live in a democratic country and who rules that who is against that and what are the theme, what are the schemes they have been introducing in our country everything it comes under the environmental literacy and the next one is an action oriented mindset yeah towards the environment if we talk about uh, action oriented mindset in the sense it's uh, it is a development uh, of attitude towards a natural environment from ancient indian tradition and practices the indian constitution as well as the scientific research on the effects of modern human activity on the environment and when we talk about the compassion yes to develop an action oriented mindset and self care to promote the environmental causes with a solid understanding and how individual societal national and global actions can help us to restore the uh, to balance between the human and the natural thereby we can say our planet where we live in because nowadays so much of natural disasters has been there yes ma'am compassion towards environment we will uh, evolve yeah you what you said is really right ma'am then when we go on to the next slide uh, that is nothing but approach when we talk about this approach no the approach should be like see uh, the approach will be different okay Uh, when we talk about a kid the approach should be different the how can we say in the sense uh, um, arti ma'am was telling in the first uh, chapter about jal pani water so if i if, if i say it in a french to bring water to a kid which is just 3 years old definitely the child the child cannot understand what we are saying so we have to approach to the students with the familiar words and to make them to understand so that it is accessible and uh, it is easy to uh, <clears throat> tell about the environment so for an example we can say show and tell a natural things found locally to the children which is very familiar to them the next one is about cumulative when we talk about the cumulative no continuous uh, process is a must when we talk about cumulative for example if i tell about the uh, foundational stage the children will learn about plant uh, trees uh, all such things the same child will when when she goes to the preparatory stage the child will learn about the different types of trees the same child when she goes to the uh, middle stage she will learn about the predator prey and the relationship be uh, relationship between the animals and the plants and the humans all such things so the uh, continuous uh, uh, building on our previous concept is very important in the approach method and next comes the participation definitely the participation is very very important when we talk about this participation no it is engagement of learning by doing so the previous one so the participation is about the engagement of learning by doing okay so uh, for an example we can just uh, take the children to the park plant the trees and the next day or two days after we can just tell them to pour water and they see the progress so we have to engage the children by uh, doing it to be a part of it then integrated when we talk about integrated learning continuous beyond the classrooms when teachers lead by example so teachers part is very important role in this integration and diversified we don't want to tell about diversity uh, diversified because we live in a country of diversified country and we have so much of cultural identities and often tied to the local environment and india has a long history and rich tradition and environmentally sustainable practice for the towns so the next one <clears throat> is about the stage wise learning so next slide so the next one is about the stage wise learning the stage wise learning is the very important element in this chapter 3 because when we talk about the learning about and caring environment apart from all those three sub topics this topic plays an important role because we are inculcating the children to learn stage by stage for example in the foundation stage how come we approach a child in the foundation stage 
if you just get in suit, uh, get inside the class of level two, and you see so much of uh, papers is lying down that this all, what will be your action as a teacher over there in this foundation stage? Can anyone tell me this? You are in level two only. I repeat, you are in level two. Uh, so how can you uh, relate yourself when you are inside the class? Come on, answer anybody. Anybody else, please answer, no? Ma'am, could you please repeat the question, ma'am? Ma'am, you are in level T. I mean, you are a teacher of level two. And you get inside to the class. When you are getting inside, inside the class, no? You see so much of papers that this all has been uh, uh, in the floor. Uh, how come you will uh, tell them about the uh, environment clean? How come you learn them? You feel unhappiness? Yeah, you feel angry, you yes. feel unhappiness, but we are in level two, no? Yes. How can we be angry with the child? Yes, ma'am. I will tell them about the importance of paper, eh? about the environment, how, how, about trees and all, how we get papers, and uh, we'll teach about uh, be passionate or compassionate about environment. Don't don't do littering and uh, don't waste paper and everything like this. <clears throat> okay, what you said is okay, but but I told you very clearly that we are in the level two stage. So when we are, yeah, very good. We make them to understand that paper comes from trees, everything, but they can't understand that at all. So the first initiative thing, what we have to do, no, we have to stay Sorry, calm we because can. we are in level we two. Can. We have to stay calm, and uh, so we have story, to we can them sensitize them. them. Through story, yeah, very paper, good. We can sensitize the students. We can make them emotional. Yes, exactly correct. Through moral stories, through rhymes, actually, see. Um, I was being, uh, before uh, 20 years, I was being the class teacher of third B, still I remember. As a, this incident happened in my class, do you know what I did? I started to sing the rhymes in the third standard. Bits of paper, bits of paper, lying on the floor, lying on the floor, make the place untidy, make the place untidy, pick them up, pick them up. So everybody started to pick them and sang the song and just put it in the dustbin. So in the foundational level stage, it depends upon the teacher, how they are inculcating the student's classroom atmosphere. The classroom atmosphere in the foundational stage, is repeatedly I'm telling, it's very important because that is the initial stage where the children start learning. And the second one will be the preparatory stage. When we comes to the preparatory stage, no, that integration into the world around us, it is really, I'm telling, immediately they'll respond because they learn. Preparatory stage is a stage where the children will grab the things very easily. They see uh, the animals, they see the uh, how they use water and they just see age and everything and they grab into the mind and at last they'll come. Ma'am, if the if we are being, I mean, uh, if the earth is rotating, why the water is not overflowing on us? They'll ask all these questions to us. Can you relate this incident? Yeah, definitely all the teachers will relate this incident. They'll ask very stupidity question. That stupidity question is a wonderful question asked by the children because they start learning. They start learning, actually. So that is very important. The preparatory stage, the children will keep on asking about the question, what is this, what is that? The teacher has to be ready with all those answers. When we talk about this middle ages, no, they are born to explore. This middle age stage are born to explore. They have the deeper understanding of what is this, what is that, what is the difference between the science and what is the difference between the social yeah, of course, Kunita Karur, ma'am. Uh, of course, they will be asking the logical question, critical question, all such questions. Of course, you're right, but it is an understanding of connection between the human and nature. They are very known. The middle stage people will, I mean, the middle stage students will know about how to explore the things with the help of the teacher or with the help of the parents because by uh, through uh, their art uh, or, uh, for an example, if you just tell, if to, uh, tomorrow is a... Uh, earth day uh, so what did you like to do it immediately they'll start drawing an earth picture 
the, and the earth is shedding the tears because of ozone layer depletion. All such creativity they'll do and they will be, they know how to do it, but they'll, uh, they'll be keep on thinking. So which is the right age for them to do such activities in the sense secondary age. So the secondary stage, no, that is the integration into disciplinary area and individual to society. Here, the student understand of ideas and equity and environmental justice and human well-being. So he developed the knowledge about tradition practice and for prevention and environmental degradation. So here, all such things is very important. Stage-wise learning for the environmental caring is very important because our curriculum needs so this. We can say ecosystem sustainability plays a very Yes, ma'am. Sustainable is very important, ma'am, because as such, we are using, we have bought this, uh, I mean, what we can say is we are using the resources bought from the future. We have to give it to them back as such. So whatever we are using right now, uh, we have to, without any damage, we have to give it to our future generation kids. There is a, uh, I mean, there is a story like what we used to say, you know, my uh, grandpa used bullet cart. Yes, my father went in bicycle. I'm going in car. My son will go in aeroplane. And my grandson again will go for the bullet cart. What resource we are trying to tell this? What resources we are going to try, uh, try to tell this? So learning and caring about environment is nothing ma but over over exploitation of uh, very good, ma'am. Exactly right. Yeah, whatever we are using right now is over exploited. Even it is a water or oil or whatever we are just doing. No, it is over exploited. So sustainability development is also in involvement. In, uh, I mean, uh, plays a very important role. So in the secondary stage, the children knows very particular thing about if we, they never used to tap the water and just wash their face and they uh, they don't never do it. If you see about the preparatory stage only, they'll be just doing it. So there is a, a stage-wise learning about the environment, which is very, very important. Please inculcate them in the beginning stages itself. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Jayavani, ma'am. Now, let me immediately invite the next resource person of the day uh, to start with the session. Um, hello, uh, everyone. So you've been all very, very uh, happily participating in the uh, program. I know we are going over time, but we'll try and wrap it up really fast. So be equally participative so we can go quickly. Yes. So the first thing I wanted to ask is about this picture about inclusion in school. What do you think inclusion means? You can unmute yourself and speak or you can uh, send a message. Yeah, ma'am. Inclusion means including. Uh, Correct. Including who? Support. Giving equal opportunity for uh, support of the special children. children. Supporting, giving equal opportunities. Very good answer. Next slide, please. Um, there are certain principles of inclusion that are already, um, yes, including special children. So um, there are certain principles that uh, NCF refers to. We'll uh, talk about them in um, them quickly. So yes, to ensure that no child is left out for special children, for specially abled children, let's uh, look at the principles. So the first principle is capability. See, um, uh, we often hear this that, you know, every child is capable, but that capability needs to be supported by respect, value and involvement in order for the child to be able to bring out its capability and really use it, really display it. So that is one. So in order to make sure that um, capability is used, 
we need to respect value and involve them and that is in one way inclusion so if you think about it here we are not talking about disabled children we are talking about giving equal opportunity to all children because there are always those cases you know we feel that okay uh, you know the smarter kids will give more opportunity i think it this used to happen a lot when we were younger probably we are more aware of these things second is success depends on school culture and learning environment i don't think i need to um, harp on this much because uh, school culture we have talked about a lot in the previous sessions as well previous chapters as well the third thing is relationships resources pedagogy everything should reflect inclusion so uh, when you're even something as simple as when you're talking about another teacher to your students be very mindful how are you talking to them how because children they say that children don't do what you say they do what you do so you better model correct behavior model inclusive behavior um obviously the one that you all uh, kind of mentioned which is provisions to be made for physical diversity inclusions and refuse to be done for social biases because this is something that we don't really do consciously right where we don't even realize that we are doing it and we sometimes have these social biases even something as simple as i think recently there was this controversy about a textbook uh, showing always the mother cooking and the father going to office right um, you may all have seen this so that is that is can you all uh, please mute yourself if you're not uh, talking yeah uh, thank you so um these kind of biases so here we are not talking about physical uh, uh, diversity here we are talking about social bias based on gender it could be bi bias based on anything gender sexuality uh, your uh, caste religion all of these things then school should be a safe social background also ma'am excuse me ma'am it yes. can be social background also economic yes. background also correct correct that's why i said Cultural there are a background lot also, yeah. yes 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 absolutely i'm i'm glad you brought it up because uh, yeah that is important to mention separately um um so now coming to safe space i have underlined that there is a reason there are safe space in two ways that we are talking about here one is a space where they feel that they can be honest they can uh, if they are facing uh, some kind of difficulty they can share with their uh, teachers or something but another thing the second kind of important thing is that you should create a space where the child feels that i can easily ask questions i can inquire i can find out you remember we talked about in the previous chapters the foundational stage if you scare the child at that age they they will never feel like the school is a safe space and that is something that we need to do so when we think of inclusion we immediately go to physical disability but this is not that and yet that is also equally important coming to um, how do we get to do, do this we need adequate number and training of teachers so there should be enough teachers to be able to accommodate uh, enough inclusion and also good enough training so that they know or they are aware of what exactly we mean by inclusion right and i i guess we are contributing to that today um coming to involving all members of the school management with the community um school and the uh, and engagement with the community so what we need to do is when we become more engaged with the community we become aware of what are the social biases in the community that we live in and the children of all are coming from that community right so it is bound to happen so we need to become more aware of these things so even uh, later on you'll talk about uh, we will uh, be in the uh, following days talking about uh, vocational training for example so if we you know relegate a person oh you're a farmer's son so you will do a uh, vocational training in that field that is a bias right so those kind of things we need to become aware of um and uh, i just wanted to mention that this is uh, talking about um, a particular act remember last uh, yesterday we talked about how all the things that we learn in uh, the ncf are from the uh, um, constitution of india so that comes under this and finally 
like I just uh, we mentioned, right? Inclusion in all senses, language, gender, religion, caste, sexuality, migrant status, disability, body type. Um, I'm sure these are quite um, understandable. Like it's quite obvious what we mean by all of these, right? Uh, next slide, sir, please. Um, so there, there are these five aspects in which inclusion can be brought about. I want you to quickly tell me at least two things, uh, two ways in which inclusion can be demonstrated in these aspects of education. So the first, uh, quickly, physical access. How can we show physical access in a school or how can uh, physical access be demonstrated? How do we ensure there is inclusion in physical access. Okay. We will ramps. Go. Yes. Ramps. Ramps, exactly. Very good. So physical barriers in that way. Ramps to um, help people who can walk. Planks. Yes, somebody said planks. Any, anybody else? Sorry, storytelling. Storytelling by puppet show elevators um that is how to teach my question is how will you actually uh, do it braille elevators yes also braille think, sorry rain braille braille trains b r a i l l e braille braille yeah 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 absolutely very good Yes. So we often just think of when it's a, when we say physical access, we immediately think of literal physical walking. But yes, uh, uh, braille, special washrooms, very important, um, Sandhya ma'am. Um, and buddy system, Abhinav sir, very good. Yes, all of these things help. Uh, one more thing that I want to just point out is because India is a country with a lot of casteism, um, Physical access also means, this is something that doesn't come to mind immediately. Uh, physical access also means equal access to all the furniture or all the um, things that are available to all children, to all teachers. I think I don't need to say any more. You understand what I mean. Um, second, coming to safety. What? How do you think safety can be ensured or demonstrated? We talked about it, right? Uh, that a fire uh, extinguishers are important. Fire extinguishers. Yes, but uh, we are talking about in in the uh, context of inclusion. Uh, yes, somebody said. Um, one second. Somebody said provision of helpers using buddy system. Actually, these things will uh, be in the field of safety as well. True that when. Um, Nowadays, uh, CCTVs exactly. Um, age appropriate TLMs, yes, because we should not be the cause of the uh, uh, child feeling unsafe, right? Um, also, make children aware of uh, bullying, harassment, uh, derogatory or demeaning language. Um, these kind of things, it should not be tolerated at all. Obviously, I think physical punishment should not be tolerated. I don't need to say that. Um, yeah, uh, the sign language experts part will come with language. Okay, let's tackle that first. So what about language? Sign language experts should be there if you do have um, deaf or mute uh, children. Anything else when it comes to language? Remember, inclusion does not only mean physically disabled. It also means including everybody from all backgrounds. Multilingualism. Multilingualism, yes. So often we say, oh, we have three languages, right? We talked about R1, R2, R3 with Arati ma'am. So yes, usage of local language. But often we are using the local language, but there is a little bit of a, an attitude saying that, oh, this dialect, oh, they are from a village. So they talk in a particular dialect. That kind of discrimination should not be there. And I'm sure there are uh, some of us who kind of are being field, uh, felt, uh, like uh, are feeling called out, but it's something that we all need to be more aware of. 
um, let's face it, we all have sometimes maybe in a joke said something like that and we didn't realize that it is offensive, right? So it's okay to self-reflect. Okay, uh, next coming to curriculum. Um, I think we talked about with the textbook, all curricular material needs to be gender by um, like gender um, non-confirming, that kind of thing. Uh, oh, we need to have Indian centric examples as well. True, because we don't want uh, a Western for want of dialect, one second. For want of dialect understanding, a child should not be left out. Yes. Okay. I just want somebody to tell me what this picture means. What do you th think this picture is a representative of? Look at just the three big words. I'm giving you clues now. When disability meet, meets accessibility, you have ability. Yes, how inclusion can be made. But if you look at the big words, what we are trying to say is that disability is not the end of life. It is not like just because a child is born disabled, he is like, that's the end of his capabilities. He still has capabilities. You as a uh, teacher have the responsibility of giving them that accessibility so that their disability turns into an ability. And we'll see how we can do that. Next, please. You accept these challenges. Accept and provide for them. You know, yeah. basically yes. what we call... Um, positive uh, uh, discrimination. Next slide, please. Yes. Uh, so here, quickly, we'll go through these. One is ba barrier-free structures and alternative furniture. We already talked about this. Early identification in and intervention. This is mainly in case of um, the mental disabilities. So, you know, children with learning disabilities, children with autism, things like this. If they are identified early, the intent... Or Yes. Cognitive development. Yes. Cognitive development can happen way better if they're identified early and we are able to help them out early. So here, identification is not um, calling out somebody, not name calling someone, not um, shaming them. Identification is just in order to help them better so that they can learn in their own way. Uh, and we should be responsible to do that. Uh, finally, accommodations in terms of accessibility uh, and not uh, expectation. So here we are not lowering the bar for them. We are not saying, oh, um, so-and-so is uh, maybe autistic. So we don't expect much of them. No, we give them special help so that they can show their true potential. We are not lowering the bar. We are making sure that they have access to the uh, the knowledge that we are uh, here to spread. So these things will help. That is text to speech or speech to text software, uh, allowing spell checks and calculators for children who uh, find it difficult. Like they should have a legitimate reason for it. Peer support for children who kind of um, feel a little intimidated maybe with teachers being on their head all the time. Uh, special educator support, this should be there at least in bigger schools, at least at the circuit level, it should be there. Uh, permitting breaks for children who, who cannot, you know, concentrate on one thing for a long time and distraction-free rooms. Um, and all of these are apart over and above what we already talked about earlier, which is the physical disability. Finally, the, the people who kind of get left behind. Uh, we t often talk about uh, children with disabilities, but we forget there are also children with special talents. And when it comes to special talents, um, we often say, oh, they get everything. What else do they need? That kind of a thing. That's not true. Uh, the thing is, there, there are sometimes children in class that you will notice, they're very smart, but they get distracted very easily because you gave them work and they've finished it and now they're distracting the whole class. So instead, what you can do for them is uh, two things that you need to remember is that these ta this talent is not is uh, you know not specifically li limited to curricular subjects and 
it becomes easier to identify when it's just one subject when but when a child is just smart in all subjects you just say oh it's a it, oh this child is just very hard working maybe they do have special talents and we have not um, identified them yes you can give them extra work to help others and that becomes a good peer learning opportunity as well but apart from that we also need to give them some special attention and support give them special uh, worksheets and things like that uh, we need to make sure this is something that we um, i think this is hopefully more of a um, obsolete thing that you know we kind of assume that oh somebody comes from a certain strata of society so they probably don't have special talents it's a unconscious thing we need to get over it uh not we need to notice different behavioral traits and you need to know them in order to notice them first um we need to read uh, redesign our pedagogy so that we can support them and finally we need to support be supportive in a democratic way as in don't put them up and put down the others at the same time finally just a picture i wanted to talk about we are aiming for equity and equity is the left picture or the right picture we are not talking about equality we are talking about equity remember so which picture right was, picture right yes, side the right picture because picture. yes yes a few people said in the comments as well so because equity means making sure that we are leveling the playing field we are not giving them all the same thing and expecting them this is like saying oh you're a monkey you're a, a frog you're a fish you're an elephant all of you climb a tree and that is the exam that's not fair right so leveling the playing field and ncf aims at inclusion and equity in education with that i come to the end of my session um on to you sir thank you jo uh, jyoti ma that was indeed a wonderful uh, presentation and uh, the inputs that you have given really makes each one of us to think and quickly let me uh, request the next resource person to take over please good evening everyone so without wasting any time i'll just proceed like in the previous slides we saw many things right we saw we discussed so many things we discussed about identification of children not only with special needs but also identifying the students who are excelling already and in that case sometimes they feel left out right so taking reference of that and we spoke about uh, let's identify let's correct every everything which we have been discussing for past one and a half hours all about how to bring changes right so related to that i have a question that you can see a picture and a quote, uh, quote return over a connection before correction so what does it exactly mean can anyone please tell me connection before correction uh, ma'am we need to get connected to the students and we need to establish a proper relation with the student and try to understand them before correcting their uh, errors in what they do exactly because without connection you know correction fails wherever you have a connection correction is uh, yes develop connection first wonderful so we if have we evaluate have the child before we evaluate, evaluate no ma'am here i would like to add understanding right because when we shift from the word to i mean from understanding to evaluate somehow i'm not saying we are doing it but somehow we become a little judgmental and this is what we are not going to include in the practices for i mean see the next upcoming slides will make things very clear what i what i am trying to say and why am i trying to say that we don't have to be judgmental so here i'll be let's understanding building or striking that that understanding where we don't have to compel the children to to know you uh, force understanding the children what we are trying to tell them rather they do it voluntarily next slide please sir helping out yes. ma'am can we say participative learning instead Wonderful. of traditional teaching or traditional learning uh, traditional learning being replaced by participative learning for connection 
for building Wonderful connection. Man. Collaborative learning, basically, right? And collaboration yeah. comes only when you have understanding, only when you have connection. And NCF has a beautiful element added for that. And that is importance of guide, uh, the guidance and counseling in schools. So in the upcoming slides, we'll be talking more about it. Yes, relation connections. And next slide, please. Meanwhile, I'll read some of the messages written over here. Next slide, please, sir. Yes, now let's not get into the stereotype definition of guidance because we know though NCF speaks about assisting individuals to enable themselves, that means we are not preparing the pupils, we are not preparing the students, rather we are replicating the future mentors. And this happens only when we know how to do invisible hand holding. Let's like see every practice which NCF is kind of revising, it all has come from Indian culture. We have been like, we all are living in the country which belongs to rishis and munis and everyone, wherein people did not, uh, uh, you, you know, did not hold the hands of their learners to let me show you the path. They would just lead the person on that path and then they would go ahead to that. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so, right? Then it's objective, personal well-being and social participation. See, when you are guiding the people, see, what is the basic motive of school education? We want to raise individual responsive citizens who, who are ready to take the, uh, you know, uh, accountability of what they are doing, why they are doing, and how they have to do it. So guidance is that element added which helps them, which helps the children to identify what is their authority, what makes them wise, what differentiates them from being, you know, there is there is a slight difference between being clever, intelligent, wise, and then, you know, understanding. So all these are different elements which can be introduced to children through guidance. And now coming to counseling, see, connection, correction, counseling, all the words begin with this same alphabet C. And all the three words are beautifully interconnected. We have psychology, importance of psychology is, you know, um, uh, getting added to the curriculum. There are so many workshops which are being conducted by CBSC at a regular interval so that our students should, I mean, so that our students can at least reach to that stage where they are not compelled to take anything as told by the teachers, rather they are able to pick up what is right for them. So here, this counseling is one of such bridge, which is gapping that, you know, which is filling that gap between imposed and volunteer step. I hope this, uh, this is very clear. Next slide, please, sir. There's, there's something beautiful written. Guidance and counseling can be seen as supporting the attainment of educational aims, creating an ethos of overall, overall well-being, teaching individuals an ethic of care and mutual respect. Now, my version to this is we cannot just simply go and lecture teach the children about all the elements which are written over here. It comes only, we we have heard so many, uh, you know, resource person talking about role model teaching. We have to portray ourselves as the role models. And hence, you know, the, the complete learning environment should speak of support, should speak of being validated, should speak of, yes, you are heard, you are accommodated, your needs are accommodated. And guiding uh, guidance and counseling are those two uh, you know, strong steps which fill in all the va vacuums or the vacant spaces which we had because now we, every school, I guess every school which follows this NCRT curriculum is very much into this understanding how much realization is important. We cannot just go and impose things. So this is what it is all about. Next slide, please, sir. Now, scope. As I, I talk about counseling, you know, it helps in so many, the, the uh, well-being is not only about, you know, taking care of good food for body, but good food for thought also. So when we are talking about good food for thought, we have to 
ensure that from the grassroots level, the child learns to understand what are my learning needs? How can I, uh, you know, build cohesion with the society? How can I be incorporated beautifully into a society? I should understand that not only speaking about my physical health is important, being vocal about my psychological health is as important. We talk about emotional regulation. We talk about mental stability. We talk about making uh, making children. Now, see, these days, almost each and every classroom has a child which needs some kind of special attention. And if a child is... Can you, uh, can you mute, Aishwarya, ma'am? If you're not talking something related to the content, may I request you to mute? Thank you. So I was talking about, you know, there is a classroom of 28 or 29 children, let's say, and one child is the one who needs some kind of special assistance or some kind of special support. Yes, a teacher understands. But is it like all the children sitting there will be accepting that special demanding child that easily? No. So then there comes in the importance of how to counsel rest of the class members to incorporate to welcome, to make that child feel welcome that yes, you may be a little different from us in multiple ways, but we all are still one. So this is what I mean about health and well-being of school members. Now, if I'm teaching something which is good for my students, that means that is going to be the best for me as well. So when we talk about school members, we talk about, NCF talks about the well-being and health, not only of students, but also of each and every member associated with school. You talk about teachers, you talk about leaders, you talk about support staff, anything. And then not only this, but how important is it to help the children to provide with academic and career counseling? Most of the time, we have been talking about academic counseling, but career counseling. And NCF has actually realized the importance of adding career counseling as one of the most, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of the uh, most important needs of the R. And for doing that, regular workshops and everything are taken into consideration. It also helps, it also talks about administrative and systematic improvement, wherein policies are revised, programs are conducted, different activities are conducted, and then, you know, diverse learning needs are incorporated, tailored so beautifully. I was listening to someone like uh, uh, in the previous slides, no, where, where we just uh, uh, talked about that, ma'am, how is it possible? Like there are so many children sitting and how is it possible for all of us to, you know, ensure that all the 30 children sitting in the class should be learning at the same level? No, for ensuring that, for bringing that, we have differentiated learning about which we uh, many of the resource persons spoke in the previous slides. So how can we accommodate that only when we realize, only when we understand that this also is the need of the R. Uh, till here, any confusion to anyone? Now, if we have spoken a lot about counseling, guidance, and everything, can anyone tell what can be the expected outcome of this collaboration with on, on which we are working? Someone said, ma'am, it's all, you know, bringing all the learners together and kind of, you know, uh, uh, promoting that learning wherein learner and the learner is already at the same level. So what can be the uh, expected outcomes of uh, this adding uh, guidance and counseling to the school? Anyone can unmute and answer. It should not be typed type of, you know, typed, we can say typed. It should be flexible like this. Should be flexible. Wonderful. And what else? It should not be rigid. Uh, that's what it should be flexible. It should uh, it should uh, base on different uh, means parameters like vocational, uh, emotional, health. Uh, uh, all this should be inculcated for that is in learning process. Yes, we read about no vocational courses. What is the intention of NCA for adding vocational courses so that the child learns to value 
each and every occupation and the people associated with it. So this mutual uh, respect, yes, that is one of the outcomes, makes a vast difference in the human different outcomes for different children as per their capabilities. I'm getting some really good answers in the chat box. Anyone else would like to unmute and answer? Ma'am, holistic development, including uh, behavioral and academic uh, excellence, exactly. academic excellence and behavioral development, mental development, cognitive development. Yes. Holistic, I, holistic yes. development of the child. Yes, and here it is another answer waiting for me, which says promote well-being, not only promoting well-being of the people for whom these things are designed, but also, you know, they will pass on the same message. Remember, when we have learners sitting in the class, whatever we are giving them, they take back and then that message goes to 10 or 20 or 50. I always believe in one child, whatever gets in the classroom, passes it on to 50 people in, you know, in an average two days or three days timing. So that is what is our power. You know, one sentence, one right thought, one right behavioral action, if practiced and inculcated, is going to affect 50 more people, not directly but indirectly. So this is what is one of the strongest expected outcomes of, uh, uh, you know, adding guidance and counseling so that the children can understand, they can realize they are not forced to learn. Do this because this is right. They should identify. But yes, this is right. So I have to yes. So whatever we discussed, right, I mean, so, so much of talking is going on. Everything is uh, uh, included in this slide. So if anyone wants to take a screenshot of this, can go ahead with that. Anything which I left is like reduction in dropouts because we know there are few points. There are few breaking points for all the children where they feel like I'm good for nothing. I should be changing because this curriculum is getting too heavy for me. So with the help of proper counseling sessions and giving them proper guidance, we can have the reduction. We can see a definite reduction in the dropouts. And definitely these all sessions incorporated by NCF will not only help in, you know, uh, accommodating the children with uh, diverse needs, but also the children with who are already blessed with intelligence and just need a little handholding. And with this, I finish my part and would request sir to please call the next resource person on the, on the screen. Thank you for the crisp, clear, and at the same time, very informative uh, presentation, ma'am. Now let me call upon Mrs. Saima Siddiqui to take over the next part of the session. Uh, it is all about ICT in education. The stage is all yours, ma'am. Uh, good evening. Good evening to all the educators. Good evening, sir. So, uh, dear participants, the last chapter of Section D is about ICT and technology. I'm sure you must be using technology, apart from education also, you must be using technology at one or the other places. Can you please mention in the chat box at what places uh, in your life you're using technology? Is it making your life easier? Can you please mention it in the chat box? Or you can unmute yourself and tell at what places you're using technology to ease your life, to make your life easier. Yes, lesson plans. Communicate. Okay. Communicate. We are able to connect with each other through technology. This is also an added advantage. Anything else? Anywhere else? Yes. Easier in office. Worksheets. Augmented reality to teach. Yes. To write reports. Yes. Even in shopping, e-shopping, e-commerce sites. Yes. Transactions, money transactions. Money oh, transactions. Okay. So actually, what is technology? Technology refers to the tools, the methods, the gadgets, or any support system which humans have created for themselves to make their lives easy. On the other hand, if we talk about ICT, that is, that is information and communication technology, specifically related to the technology in education, comprising softwares, hardware, the gadgets like computers, the gadgets like uh, the mobile phones that we use, and any other gadgets that use technology and internet 
can be listed in ICT, that is Information and Communication Technology. Now, in this chapter, the NCF mentioned about how we can integrate technology in our classroom to make the classroom more interactive. We as teachers always try to find out various methods, various, you know, tools and teaching aids. How can we make the classroom more interactive, more lively for the students? So don't you think technology is the best thing to make our classroom easy, very interactive and, you know, very engaging for the students? Yes, participants, do you think? Technology is uh, an interactive tool, is a tool which can make our uh, classroom more interactive and lively. Yes, dear participant, you agree with me? Okay. Yes, so ma'am. Now, uh, if we talk about, yes, yes. Sir. So technology has really made uh, the teaching more easier. We as teachers are able to prepare the lesson plans. We as teachers are able to prepare differentiated worksheets for the student based on their caliber. So it has made our life very easy. So after the COVID-19, uh, COVID-19, you know, was a, uh, was a time which was uh, a time where, where, you know, it has disrupted the learning of around 286 Indi uh, students across India. Their uh, learning was, you know, uh, was at stack. They were they, they did not have any access to their learnings. But then during COVID-19, what was the game changer? The game changer was the technology. Many new tools had emerged during that time. The radio, the teleclasses, the e-learning platforms like, like Deeksha, the education, the Ministry of Education has introduced this new platform, Deeksha platform, wherein, you know, a lot of educational videos have been uh, uh, uploaded which is accessible to uh, to all the students across the country. And then there are augmented tools also. Then there are virtual labs also. So during COVID-19, lot of uh, changes have been emerged in technology. And then if we talk about AI, that is artificial intelligence. And then ML, that is machine learning, augmented reality virtual reality have made the potential to revolutionize the education. Now, every day there is a new tool which have been invented, which has been introduced, which makes our lesson plan and the classroom teaching more interactive. There are, there are various quiz platforms that are introduced. Now, sitting in the classroom, the students can visit various museums across the world. So, it has brought the classroom, the, wor the world to the classroom. You know, these... Um, uh, these videos which are accessible in the classrooms and even at home if the child want to access which has made the education and the learning for the child more easier now if we talk about the responsible use of ai the uh, ncf and the government of india has introduced you why you ai as a tool which aims to help the student become ai ready because, you know, the next generation, the coming up future is about artificial intelligence only. One who is well-versed in artificial intelligence is going to, you know, get success everywhere. So, it, it, there is a need that everyone should be well-versed with AI. Now, if we talk about generative AI, what is generative AI? It can create the content like text. It can create music on its own. It can create images. What what it takes, it takes some existing data and then you just have to give a prompt to it. And then, you know, it can generate multiple images, generate audios and gen generate text. Can, can anyone name any two generative AI tools which are very common these days? Any two generative AI which is uh, very common these days? Yes. One is Chat GPT. I I am sure you must have heard about it, and some of you or many of you must have used it. Okay, X10. Okay, Jasper. Yes. So the most common generative tool that uh, that is being used everywhere is the Chat GPT. The other one is the Gemini. In education, Gemini. Yes. In education. Lord, yes, there are many. Correct, correct. Co-pilot, co-pilot, definitely. So, see, there are many AI tools which are there these days. In education, generative AI assists in creating ages. Yes. 
class room. You can find about them where you can use this generative AI tools to make your class more interactive. Now, moving on to the next slide, it talks about potentials of ICT in school education. So, next slide. Okay, the misuse of AI, a quote from NCFs. The NCF says that AI can lead to the serious issues. We have seen the benefits of using technology. We have seen the, uh, the benefits of using uh, generative uh, AI and other uh, augmented reality tools. But then there are certain limitations to this. AI can lead to various and serious issues. Students and teachers will start relying too much on it and they will start relying too much on their uh, on the technology. We give homeworks to the students to enhance their critical thinking. But don't you think uh, with the surge of uh, AI uh, these days, the students will depend too much on AI and then, you know, some somewhere their critical thinking and creativity will be killed. The same, if the teacher will be generating the lesson plans and other uh, assessment tools and the worksheets using this AI, their creativity and their uniqueness will also be killed because all the teachers will be using the same uh, AI and the generative tools and then there will be no creativity, you know, there's no uniqueness in that. So the wise use of AI and the technology is advised by NCF. Yes, sir, moving on to the next slide. Yes, potentials with access for students. Like we, no doubt, the technology has broken all the bar barriers in education. ICT breaks down traditional constraints, allowing students to explore beyond the classroom. Now students can explore the content beyond the classroom, beyond the curriculum. Even sitting in their home, just on a click of a button, they can, you know, access the material that they want to access. The other benefit for the student is that they can enable and virtual experiences such as exploring museums, such as, such as explore, exploring planetoriums, uh, they can do it from the comfort of their homes. Now, about uh, another benefit of using AI is it is accessible to everyone, be it, you know, a person who is sitting in a, in a, in a place where, you know, rural area, but then if he, he has an access of internet and he has a gadget, then he is having an access to the high quality of education, which he or she can use anytime, anywhere in the day. The another basic advantage of using uh, this uh, uh, AI and the uh, interactive tools for the student is it allows the student to choose what they want to learn and explore new topics of their own place. They can choose any topic. If they want to repeat any topic, they can repeat it and they can learn in their own pace. Teachers can access online training and resources. It is very easy for us to, you know, attend uh, any uh, any online resources or any online training sessions, which enables all of us uh, to learn on a self-paced learning for their professional and uh, professional development. Now, access of ICT tools is another advantage. And then supplement textbooks. Now, any child, any teacher can access wide variety of books and wide variety of content everywhere and anywhere. Uh, which breaks the physical barrier of getting, you know, uh, the content, the study material from anywhere. Student can engage in peer forum, student can engage in chat box and self-assessment tool also that can enhance their learning and that, that, in, that makes their learning very easy. Now, there are many, uh, yes, next slide. The other advantage of using the AI and technology uh, it supports the special need, you know. If technology aids at universal design, that is UDL tools address the need of students, their disability. And if a child is, you know, we were talking about inclusive education. If a child is not able to see, then using technology, we can, you know, make uh, the curriculum audio for it so that the child is able to hear and learn. So it has made easy uh, for us and for the teachers to include more and more children, be it the auditory, auditory learner or the visual learner or the kinesthetic learner, it becomes easy for teachers to, to make the differentiated learning platforms for all the students. Now, next is about how the technology has empowered and the teachers with the emerging pedagogies. 
Now, this is a new platform which has been introduced by the Ministry of Education. So, next slide. It is NDEAR. NDEAR is this National Digital Education Architecture. So, next slide. NDEAR, yes. It is an important forum. It is an important platform which unifies the framework that allows different educational institutes and different colleges to be united and to be integrated so that they get to learn from the best practices of each other. They get to learn or share their best resources. Next is the digital book and library. The technology has made it so easy for all of us to, you know, access different wide variety of books across the, you know, writers and the publishers. It is very easy and the free of cost. Even CBSE has introduced its digital library wherein, you know, wide variety of N number of books are available for all the subjects which is accessible to every student across the country. Now there are audio tools, there are video tools, there are animations in Deeksha platforms, which is again accessible to each and every student, which again makes their learning so easy. Just, you know, they have to wish and then if they want to, there has to be a wish. If they want to learn, then, you know, learning is not difficult these days. Then there are online courses which are available for the students, for the teachers. Now this is uh, virtual labs and simulations are also available. There are virtual labs, virtual mathematics labs, virtual science labs through which the students can, you know, learn different activities and assessment and practice materials are also available on a single click for all the students and for all the teachers. The next. Now, again, you know, using anything, even the technology, there are benefits also, there are pros also, and there are cons also. So even if we are using the technology, if the students are using the technology, the teachers are using the technology, they have to take precautions, certain precautions. And, you know, excess use of everything is really not good. So we have to use it in a constructive manner and which is really helpful for us to make our classroom more interactive, more engaging for the student so that, oh. you know, students uh, ease out, their learning becomes easy for them. Yes, sir. Next slide. The next slide. Okay, so this was all about the last chapter, chapter six. I really, you know, want to thank all the audience for their patient listening. So thank you so much, sir. And thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Sai Mama. It was indeed a wonderful, crisp, clear, yeah. and at the same time informative uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, my heartfelt thanks to all the resource persons who have been a uh, part of this great session today. And my sincere apologies to all the participants uh, because today's session has been a bit, you know, like uh, it has got extended more than what we expected. But uh, we are happy that we have you all along with us. Even it got extended and, uh, uh, you know, like uh, it means a lot to us. Uh, and always, uh, let me speak about the advantage just for a second that uh, we could interact with each other and we have learned. Even it got extended, it was all about learning. So thank you so much, one and all, once again. And uh, without taking much time, I would just like to give a glimpse about how to grab a certificate. Just uh, in case uh, you need a certificate, uh, can any resource person write in the chat box my number, please? Uh, in case you want to grab a certificate, kindly send rupees 50 to the number which will be written in the chat uh, chat box uh, that is double nine zero eight nine two uh five seven three zero yes double nine zero eight nine two five seven three zero g pay phone pay and uh, paytm are available thank you minu ma'am uh, and along with the payment uh, after the payment kindly send the screenshot along with your name please do not forget to do that and within 24 hours, you will be getting your certificate. So thank you so much. Uh, it's uh, already uh, late. So good night, everyone. Have a wonderful sleep. And let's catch up tomorrow once again for the rest of the uh, NCF. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.